Welcome back. Today we are flying the A4B Skyhawk. And some things first. Yes, it's officially a ground pounder, but I don't advise you to use it as one. Unless, of course, you're playing ground RB. It has a very good ordnance. But all in all, for air RB, this thing is good and at the same time very painful. It has very good capabilities, especially in the acceleration department as well as the air spawn, because you spawn in very fast, very far forward, and you will reach the enemy airfield on a lot of maps when they are going about 700-800 kph, which makes it so you can boom and zoom them at the start of the game, making it so they can't really set up for the rest of the game and you destroy the whole game flow for them, which is very powerful, and you want to use that as much as you can. Uh, this game, I didn't use it. I went for the B-57 instead. I don't advise you to do this. And the gun pod this thing has, yes, it doesn't actually add any weight. But the ammo in the gun pod does add weight. And the gun pod itself is very bad. It has a very low rate of fire. The damage isn't the best. And it's inaccurate as all hell. So I don't advise you to actually use it. I just advise you to be a little bit more ammo conservative. And just pick your targets that way. The guns are very inconsistent. One time you will one shot someone at 900 meters. And the other time you will hit 6, 60... 40 rounds on some guy's wing and it will give you a flap grid so don't rely on them too much overall they're pretty good i just feel like when the server has a bit of a shitty connection and maybe the ping is a bit high then the guns suddenly stop working i'm not too sure what it is but i just advise you to bring the two aim line b's just the load i have right here i flew it 50 50 i got 175 kills in it now and there you can see the guns just giving that guy a lot of hits and your kills aren't going to get stolen in this thing, which is quite unfortunate. Not sure how it didn't hit that one. But it's no big problem. And here you can see the retention, as long as you're not moving. And the moment I start pulling, you can see that all my speed just goes out of the window. Of course, I'm doing a very steep turn in the vertical, which isn't very helpful. But once these slats come out, the speed bleed is absolutely insane. So you want to keep that in mind. You also don't turn very well. Never use your air brake in this thing. Unless you're fighting another A4. And even then I advise you to be careful. Here I go for the A5 first. Because I don't have a good solution for the guy that's on my squad mate. And I can take him out. And now I can focus on the guy that's going for get low. Get low has a damaged engine. So I'm like I'm just going to shoot a missile at him. His heat signature will be less. G91 is very slow. And guess what. The missile goes for my squad mate. He would have been dead anyway, because his engine was completely busted. But uh, it was a bit unnecessary for me to finish him off and in turn actually steal the kill of the G91. I didn't mean to do that, sorry for that. But I couldn't help it. I just had to try a last ditch effort to, to missile the G91 before he would kill my squad mate. But I wasn't able to do that. I had not, not much to lose. So I did it anyway. And for now the MiG-17 is going the other way, which is good for me. I need some speed as this thing dumps a lot of speed in turns, as I said. So you do want to have some energy when you start an engagement. And otherwise you're going to have a very tough time. And you can see the climb rate. Acceleration. It's pretty good. It's very capable, especially at higher speeds. And you will be able to outrun Sabres if, 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 if they don't outrun you very hard and that sounds very logical i know but if they're catching you and they're about three to four kilometers away if you go above 950 1000 uh, by going in a five degree climb you will outrun most of them the saber doesn't have the climb rate to keep up with you it might have good retention and it might have a very high top speed compared to you uh, but that doesn't matter in a straight line climb as long as you don't go too steep because he will catch you if you do that because he can just go straight for a bit and then pitch up right below you and here we go, back to energy fighting. I'm not too sure why the C2B is going back to his base. But that's good for me. I can 2v2 these two guys over here. I'm just trying to pick a target now. And the MiG-17 will have given me most problems in the long run. So I want to kill that guy first. But then I see that the T-Flowers guy, the F-86, is stalling himself out basically. And if I go for the MiG-17, that guy will be right on my 6. As you can see, he slots in behind the MiG-17 and I would have been right on him. The guy crashes, he's air braking. Dodge him, don't want to ram him. And for now I'm catching him. Of course the MiG-17 will be able to outrun me. But he goes vertical and he gives me the shot. I don't hit. That happens. 
And here you can see the difference in turn rate. He will completely out turn me. But because he started air braking, going straight up. Which isn't a very good combination to do. Not very good in terms of uh, energy management, so to speak. And here you can see the guns doing absolutely nothing again. There you go, he's dead. And now we go to the airfield because there's a C2B lurking over there. And as well as something, I don't know what it is. But I do know what it is. If, and you might know what it is if you have been paying attention. But I wasn't aware of it at this point. So I'm just going to go for the dot that I see climbing over there. It looks like the C2 or the 262 in general. So I will be going for him first. The C2B might give you a bit of a problem. You will be able to outrun it. And you will be able to drain it of all of its fuel. But uh, the acceleration on that thing is very good. And if he tries to commit for you. And if he really wants you dead. Uh, he is able to do that. So be careful of them. But they only have two and a half minutes of fuel. Of rocket fuel that is. And in that time it's very unlikely that it will be able to kill you. Also because you get that air spawn. You get an amazing climb rate. And those things together aren't the best when it comes to, uh, you know, when you're really low on fuel and your strength is rushing. C2 doesn't look to be having any fuel left, rocket fuel left. It's a C1A, even better. That thing is a flying brick. And he doesn't have any fuel left. Again, rocket fuel, I keep saying that. I will be able to go up here, cut into his loop. He's way too heavy to pitch up with me here. I'm not sure if you can see the stutters as well. If so, I apologize for that. He dives out. Logical thing to do. Because he needs some speed to actually compete with me. Heinkel 51 is very slow. Very underpowered. He pulls back into my guns. And I shoot him. And he gets pilot sniped. I'm not going to head on the Heinkel 51. Very logical thing to not do. He has a biplane. He won't be able to get any shots on me. Other than like this. When he tries spraying at me. And when I go head on. So I'm not going to give him the, the head on. And risk getting killed. I only have 30 rounds. Which isn't a lot. 15 rounds a gun. And these guns fire really really fast. He's basically stalled out. Because the Heinkel 51 isn't very. Uh, doesn't have a very strong engine. I shoot. Well there's aileron off I guess. I can't even kill the Heinkel 51. And that thing is made out of paper. So what do I do? I just go back up. Spiral a little bit. I'm going faster in a climb than he goes in a straight line. So I'm not too worried about him. I might stall a bit sooner than him. But he won't be able to nose up. And I'm not pulling over, right over him. Because he will be able to prop hang me. So I'm waiting for him to get a little bit more altitude. Bleed a little bit more speed. And then I go over him. I pull up. Put those flaps down. And there we go. Not the most uh, exciting kill on a Heinkel 51. I know. But you know, 7 kills. I got cucked uh, the game after this. Hit a guy with about uh, 20 shells. And he didn't die. And then he one shot me with 50 kills. No, it all happens. Then you have the result screen. And here's uh, a couple of games later. It's uh, midway into the game. And this is very lucky. I uh, don't think the, the, this plane is very good at dogfighting. It might handle 1v1s, but the CL and the F5 that are coming up are very strong planes. I should have had them there, but I couldn't aim. Unfortunate. I can pull up here, and you can see that my speed is just flying out of the window. And if you run that gun port with the quote-unquote unlimited ammo, you will notice it. You will bleed even more, and you're going to die using it. It's very stressful to fly with it. It's very stressful to fly without it. But the gunpod itself doesn't really give you a lot. And he's just going to loop. And there's no way I'm going to stick with him doing that. So I'm just going to straighten out. And accelerate away. The adept guys. Sexy goat. It's an old squadron member. Osric is a squad mate of him. And of friends. So they kind of ignored me. As I was dealing with this. Uh, their team. I was going to give him the win. As I'm. There's no way I'm going to win. For the smart pilots. In battle planes. In this thing. So they left me alone for a big part of the game. And I'm just going to be dealing with this CL-13 Mark V. As well as the MiG-17F. There it is, the F5 Shenyang. And they're going to be giving me a lot of trouble. It's quite a long fight, but it's quite a good one. But do keep in mind that I got quite lucky. And this plane isn't very good at handling these kinds of planes. They outrun me. They outclimb me. 
the only thing that I really outdo them in is rushing. Because of my climb rate, because of my air spawn, I will be able to reach the enemy team very, very fast. The problem is, they can too. <laughs> and by the time I'm there, by the time I'm near their airfield, these are the planes that will out accelerate most of the things on the runway. The CL-13, not as much. The B does. The A5, not, not too much. And because he's still flying at this point, that means he doesn't run min fuel, which means that I can actually handle him. The MiG-17, as well as the MiG-15, mostly run min fuel, and you don't want to dogfight them. You can barely out accelerate them to begin with. The only real advantage you have on them is maybe your guns, that are a bit more accurate, or easier to use. And your roll rate, obviously, the roll rate on this thing is very good. And at these altitudes, you can see that I can start pulling away from Sabres. That CL-13, Mark 5, I'm just leaving him in the dust. And he was catching me at the start. He had more energy. And now I'm just running away from him. That F5, however, is a bit of a different story. And he's doing a lag, a lead pursuit on me. He's just going straight for now. He's cutting the distance. And then he will come back in. Which makes it a problem. Because I have two guys on my 6. And they're both on different positions. Which makes it very hard for me to go 2v1. And this plane really hates going 2v1 to begin with. But I got some altitude. I know that I have more power than the CL up here. So I'm going to try to fight him up here. Maybe get a stall shot. Not too sure what I'm going to do. It will completely depend on what they do. Dodge the F5. He doesn't pull very well because we're at high, very high altitudes. Pull back into the Mark V. I don't bleed too much speed up here either. Because we're so high and we're relatively slow. I should have killed him there but I couldn't aim. Again. My aim was a bit rusty this game. And the guns really didn't want to work. And here the CL could have easily run away. Because you can see that I'm pulling inside of him. And he's still outrunning me. Which means he's a significantly amount faster. And guess what he does. He puts the air brake out. And he tries to reverse this thing. And you don't want to try to reverse this thing in the Sabre. Unless he's catching you. And you really have to. But the moment he's really catching you. You don't have to put your air brake out. Unless of course this guy really tries to bleed his speed too. And I'm just, I keep getting hits on him. I finally get a crit. And I go to swing. And now I get one of the longest dogfights I've had in jets in a very long time. With the Shangyang F5. Shangyang F5, I'm not so sure what he was doing. Maybe he was giving me room so I could 1v1 the CL. If so, much appreciated. It was a very good fight that's about to come up. And for now, I just want to get some speed, some altitude. As the Shangyang catches me. I don't want to wait too long, however. Because if I wait too long, he will be right on my 6 and he will try to air brake me, then I am dead. So I want some speed. I got my altitude, I got some speed. And now I can start pulling into him. I don't want to pull too hard to bleed all of my energy. I accidentally pressed my view key there, there's no reason I did that. I hope I can, can pull into him because of my speed lead. I don't have enough ammo to spray at him. Otherwise I would have and I probably would have killed him right here. But I felt like I didn't have, to, didn't have a good shot. He's very fast at this point. Comparatively, of course. And he can just look at him. Look at the energy that guy has. And he can keep doing this. He can loop me forever. And the reason you can dogfight F5 to a certain degree. And the MiG-17s completely well, out of the question. The Shang Yang has to run 20 minutes to be competitive. Unless, of course, you want to go head on and you want to kill someone. But if you want to go for a decent game. You have to run 20 minutes of fuel. Which makes it a lot heavier than the MiG-17. And the MiG-17 is already a bit heavier to begin with. Felt like I could get the shot there, but he started pulling them or rolling the moment I shot. So, I'm not gonna do it. Didn't feel comfortable, and I'm very glad I didn't. I had my missile prime in case he tried to stall me out, which he didn't, well he did. And here you can see that this plane will always stall nose down. It doesn't matter if you moved your nose, your nose, your nose like 30 degrees over the 90 degree mark, and you're basically hanging the other way, this plane will stall out nosing down. Keep that in mind because it screwed me over the first time here. And I realized it always does that. So be aware of that. He's coming back in. I think I should have had the shot here. But I just didn't lead enough. Miscalculated his speed a bit. And his turn rate. There comes Rafini. I thought he was with the adept guys. And he's going to leave me alone as well. So I kind of ignored him. But he doesn't. I'm not sure why he does this, but it's whatever. 
continue on the, with the F5. I have some speed now. Of course that damage and wing isn't really helping me out a lot. I missed again. And you can tell, well you can't really tell, but you can imagine that I'm getting a bit stressed right now. I have very low ammo. I'm worried about Rafini coming in down on me as well. And this is a very nice fight I had so far in versus the F5. So even if I would lose at this point, I think it would be a nice fight to showcase you anyway. So you can see the low speed capabilities of this thing. The low speed capabilities of this thing are good. Don't get me wrong. But when people start energy trapping you, you are basically hopeless. This guy had to be, well, a little bit more aggressive. Here you can see I tried to predict his path. Sadly, he pulled out of my guns as he should. And I have to dive a little bit again just to get my speed up. I'm out turning him because I'm slower than him. So I dove a little bit to get my speed up and then try to pitch up after him. Hoping he wouldn't expect it. Get only a hit on him. I have four rounds left. And at this point I think, yeah, it's, it's done. Luckily, he's somewhat damaged. He's not really crit, so I don't expect him to crash. Hoping for some engine damage. Didn't feel like I had the shot right there. So I'm going to pull back into him here. I'm going to stay low. Hope for him to dive after me. Hopefully so he would like roll over. Maybe crash because he has wingtip damage. And you can see that he's kind of struggling now. Return to battlefield. Something I don't like seeing. Here we go. I'm out turning him now. I'm very slow. He's very slow. And four rounds. Just a crit. It's that damage of left wing. And at this point I thought I was dead. I really thought I just um, I, tr I threw it. I, sh I shot my ammo at the wrong times. But then I see that he couldn't pitch up at all anymore. And it turned out I killed his engine. And there you have it. He's not going to pull over that mountain in the slightest. There you go. F face plant right into the mountain. And at this point I'm damaged. I'm out of ammo. And I'm going to land just in the field. They can kill me. I don't mind. I gave them the kill. I gave them the win. There was no way I was going to win for in, in this plane anyway. So... There you go. Hope you enjoyed it. It's a fun plane. Very stressful as well. So if you enjoy this kind of playstyle, be my guest. And otherwise, look for something else. Hope you enjoyed it. I will be uploading a P59 video relatively soon. I'm still working on the energy management. It's a bit of a tough subject to really cover in a very not abstract way. Where it actually gives you rules and it actually gives you good examples. So I'm still kind of brainstorming on it. I'm have, I haven't actually physically started. I'm trying to figure out how, how I'm going to do it. So look forward to that. Have a nice day. And I will see you very soon again.